Guitar and Excel, Pentatonic and Major or Minor Scale Positions Worksheet. Get ready because it's time for our Guitar Scales 2, Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we did so in a prior section. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you don't necessarily need access to this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint because we'll simply use it as a tool to map out the fretboard, give us the notes, give us the scale and chords that we're focused in on if you do have access to this workbook though, there's currently like nine tabs down below. We've got eight of these example tabs and an OG orange tab. The OG orange tab representing the original worksheet we put together in a prior section. It now acting as our starting point going forward, mapping out the entire fretboard, giving us our entire musical alphabet, letters, numbers, and combining them both in letter and number format. We have a worksheet or a key that can be adjusted with this green cell creating the worksheets on the right providing us the scale that we're in and the notes within that scale and then the chord constructions from the notes in the scale we then wanted to focus on the C major scale in open position on the fretboard and then map out all of the chord constructions from each of the notes in the C major scale we did that starting of course with the C major chord open position mapped out on frets one through three. We then uh, represented in colors the one, three, five, and then we looked at the fingering. We did that for all of the chord constructions, including then going to the F. We skipped the two and the three so that we can first look at the major chord constructions and then to the G, same idea. And then we went back to the minors on the two chord, so D minor, and then we went to the three chord and constructed an E minor, and then to the six chord and constructed an A minor, and then we went to that kind of funny one, the seven chord, and looked at the diminished. Now note that we did this all in open position here, which I'm defining as frets one through three. That's kind of the, a great place to start because then you can really understand this open position, not just as a scale shape, but as a series of chords that can be combined together to create, in essence, this scale shape. Now, now we're going to go to the middle of the guitar and start to think about building actual scale shapes and think about it in terms of scale shapes as opposed to in terms of chords. So this worksheet, I know this looks quite intimidating right here because we're mapping out. This is what we're going to do to start out with. We mapped out the entire fretboard two times over. It goes 12 frets out and then we mapped it again to 24 frets so that we can clearly see the patterns as the patterns repeat. So first, we're just going to map out these patterns on the fretboard and then we're going to dive into specific areas starting with the middle of the fretboard which is going to be on fret five in essence five through eight is basically your major place that we can start learning the fretboard and that's a great place to be because then you can naturally grow learning your positions to the, to both the right and the left whereas if you learn the positions in open position then you're kind of learning in a different way the same things we did before uh, and you can't naturally grow to the left right because you because you're at the you're at the nut you can only go one way so with the scale positions i would suggest if anyone's new to them or even if you're not it might be best to kind of like think of yourself right in the middle of the fretboard learn that and then you can naturally expand your positions both back towards the nut and up towards uh, up towards the the, uh, the other side of the guitar as well. So then once we learn that middle position, we will expand both up the guitar and then back the guitar. And that means that we'll take a look at this this position again in terms of scale positions. And then we'll learn the caged system, which will basically take the chord constructions and relearn the top bit of the guitar in another format so the top bit of the guitar we will then have looked at in terms of only scales basically and now we're going to look more in depth about uh the chord positions which are within the scales all right so 
So uh, we'll actually construct this worksheet this time. We'll do the pentatonic scale. We'll do uh, the major and pentatonic scale. We'll do the major scale. We'll see how they fit together. And then we'll map out a chord within it so you can kind of get an example of what's going to happen later when we do the caged system and we start moving up shapes and how they fit into the pentatonic scale so this is going to be, so this will be excel intensive uh however i think it's good if you're looking at it just from a music theory standpoint because you'll see how we're kind of building out uh, uh the fretboard as we go and then like i say after we do this we're going to then focus on one specific point the middle of the guitar basically fret five here all right so to do this we're going to go to the og tab i'm going to copy it over i'm going to hold down uh the control uh before i do this i would kind of like to add actually this circle of thirds that i added so i'm going to go back to this example tab and we have this circle of thirds that we added which is just basically taking every other note and i'm going to try to copy this into our og tab so i'm just going to copy this here and go to my OG tab. So we have it there. I'm not going to put it in the numbered ones, but only in the ones where we have the letters and numbers. And I'm just going to paste it right there. And there we have it. So it's taking, you know, the C and then the, the E. So that looks right. And then I'm going to copy this again all the way down, not for the numbered one, but for the lettered one. Boom. So there we have the C, the D, and then I'm going to copy that down to here as well. We'll say boom right there and then i'm going to go down and go to right here uh boom and then i'll go down to this one right here we have it there and then i can go down to this one right here have it there and then this one right here okay so there we have it so hopefully i did that well if not we'll fix it later you know it might actually be useful in the modes as well so <laughs> I'll try to do I'll, I'll try to do it fairly quickly. Let's go to the modes too and do my circle of thirds over here just on the top ones here. I'm going to paste it to the modes and we're going to say boom. Okay. Mo modes. There's mo are there more modes? Mo mo modes. Mo modes to the right. All right. So there we have all the modes have the circle of thirds at least on that top bit okay that's enough so now let's copy it over i'm going to hold down control left click and drag it to the right there's my og tab i'm going to say this is going to be the practice of the scale overview and i'm going to right click on it and make it blue so let's make it that blue right there that's what i usually do that blue okay and so then we're going to do we're going to start off the same way because I want to make sure my key is in C. We're going to do it in the key of C, or you can think of A minor as well if you want, uh, or other modes, but those are the main two. And then I'm going to then, at least when we talk about the pentatonic, it's going to be in those two. Okay, so then let's select these. Let's unformat these. Home tab, style, format painter. And I'm going to get rid of the formatting on this one. Go into, uh, let's go down here and say, clear the rules clear the rules get these rules out of here i've had it up to here with your rules let's get rid of the rules on the og tab so we don't have to do that step going forward home tab style i'll get rid of the rules here no rules no rules around here i make my own rules i make my which means i don't have many rules because making rules is hard man i don't know if you've ever noticed that i sat down to make my own rules one time and after like five minutes i was like hump this you, who are you to be making rules over me and anyways so then let's go ahead and uh hide some cells so we're gonna hide all of the all of the the just the numbered fretboards so we can see the numbers and the letters oh no let's copy them over first so i'm going to select the whole thing i'm going to go from here down to here i'm going to copy that and I want to copy it all the way down because we want to be working in the key of C major each time. So I'm just going to copy this and put it here. I'm going to copy this and put it there. And then just keep on pasting it down, throwing down the pasting down. Boom. Boom. All right. And then we're going to go back up top again. And now let us uh, hide 
the, the numbered only ones. So I'm going to put my cursor from 1 to 12 and right click and hide that stuff. Hide. And then we're going to hide. Let's go down to... Let's make it let's make it so I can hide some of this stuff up top so I can I'm going to hide also I'm going to look at 24 frets out which is a longer fretboard than we've seen in the past obviously and I'm going to be hiding from let's go from let's go from Z to AJ right click and hide that stuff so we got the 24 fret fretboard and then our worksheet on the right hand side and then normally when we hide the ones underneath I've been hiding from here down. So I'm going to hide from here down. Yes, that is correct. So let's hide from here down to the next one. I'm going to right click and hide. And then I'm going to, I'm following this blue line right here. So I'm going to go right below that blue line because that's what our custom has been. And I'm going to hide all of this stuff, right click and hide. And then I'm going to go down right to that line again, all this stuff right click and hide we're going to just put it in the closet just put it in the closet and no one will know that it's a mess in there just throw it in the closet hide and then i'll just you threw everything in the bathroom so what if they need to go to the bathroom they're going to see all the stuff in there you have that's not a place to hide it you have to hide it like in the closet where they're not going to go so they don't see all the stuff that we hid in there. Let's go up top because it's a mess in here. We have to hide all the stuff. Okay, so then let's map this thing out. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold control and scroll back up a bit. And I'm trying to make it large enough so that we can see 24 frets on the fretboard as well as our worksheet or at least a piece of the worksheet so that we can see the notes in the scale because we will be using them to format our fretboard as we do so remember there's only 12 notes in the musical alphabet and most guitars are going to be somewhere a little bit over 12 frets so they have all the notes on each of the strings and then they're going to repeat a little bit and some guitars will be longer than others but not many guitars are going to be 24 frets long however in theory it's useful to kind of extend the neck of the guitar because then we can clearly see the pattern as we're repeating these patterns on both the pentatonic as well as the major uh, scale patterns so we're going to map out the whole pentatonic pattern here and then we'll map out the major scale pattern, which the pentatonic pattern will fit into. We're going to do it on the entire fretboard first, but then we're going to focus in on, in future presentations, just that fret five position. So if you look at a normal guitar, it's going to be around 12 frets, right? Because that's when it starts over again. And notice the middle of the guitar then is around fret five. That's why it's quite useful to start learning your scale positions in the middle because you can naturally expand out from that middle both ways. Okay, but first we'll map out the whole thing. So I'm going to go from uh, E all the way over to this E on 24 frets out and we're going to map out the notes, but we just need five. Let's do five notes. I'm going to make these one, two, three, five, six. Those are the ones that are going to be our pentatonic home tab styles let's ma let's make those no home tab font let's make those green i'm choosing this green so we're going to start with the pentatonic only five out of the seven notes so i'll select the whole thing again and then home tab styles drop down conditional formatting this is going to be equal to the c and this is going to be green they're all going to be green again we're doing that thing everybody has the same the same color same uniform everything needs to be uniform here everything needs to be uniform people trying to change the stuff on the uniform no one knows what they look like when that happens i'm tired of that crap so people that are doing that being a piece of crap and now they're working on being the whole pile of crap you know there's being a doing this piece of crap stuff and now they're working on being the whole being the whole pile so then I'm going to skip the four and go to the five to the G. And then we're going to say this is going to be equal to the G and format. And then, okay, 
Okay, and then Uno Vase Moss one more time on the A. A. Okay, so there we have it. So there, so I think that works. And now we're going to be focusing in on this position five. That's going to be kind of like our starting point, middle of the fretboard in essence. And there's that shape that you might be familiar with if you've if you've learned. A lot of people call it shape number one. Uh, that's not like a technical term because some people don't use that terminology, but a lot of people do. They would say this is the major pentatonic or the number one shape. And I will use that as well. Some people will call it a G uh, shape using the G shape that we talked about over, over here, uh, da, 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 this shape to indicate the pentatonic shapes as well as the major shapes, which is kind of a, a useful tool. It's another way to see it. So if I go back on over here, I could see the G shape is boom, 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 right there. So, so you can kind of, the G shape doesn't have all of the notes in the scale or all of the actual fingerings in the scale, but you can use that as a home ground. But remember, this isn't a G though, it's a C. So when we use the caged system, we'll talk more about that later, but you can use the cage system as an anchoring tool for these shapes as well. So you might, I, I would learn both, learn that this is position one, because a lot of people say that, or that this is basically the G, you can think of it as the, the G major shape, which is currently in a C position because the root note is on the C, but we'll talk more about that later. R right now, we're gonna then uh, extend the rest of these shapes. So let's copy this again and say position number two. Now I wanna emphasize kind of like the overlap here, so if I go to this position, the next position goes right here. It goes boom, 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 boom. And let's make that one uh, yellow. So I'm gonna say yellow. And the thing I wanna point out, I'm gonna make this a little bit longer so that you could kind of see the over, is that there's this overlap in the middle. So this, oh, there's always going to be these overlaps between the positions. So just like we saw kind of in the shapes where we saw the G shape can kind of also be an A depending on how you look at those notes, uh, an A or, or a G because they're kind of in between. The same thing happens with these pentatonic positions. So this is going to be position two and I'll copy this out. This is going to get messy looking. That's, uh, that's part of the th thing I'm trying to point out here is it gets messy. And then we're gonna say that this one, let's make this uh, green and this, uh, not that, not the fill color, make it green. And this is gonna be position three. So now we've got position three. Let's put it so we can see it right there. So boom, 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 boom. And then you've got to pick uh, then this one to the right here. So I got to actually extend that and you can see then that this shape is actually one, two, three, four, five frets long. And uh, this shape is only four frets long. So if you imagine your fingers on each fret, it fits perfectly. That's kind of the point. We're trying to get a shape where our fingers basically fit on the fret. You can't get it perfect. Some of them have four and some of them have five because you know they're kind of these two notes are kind of sticking out here. But that's kind of the goal. We're trying to come up with an economical shape that it has everything that you need within one kind of finger in position. And you can think of your hand at that one kind of position. So let's do the next one. I'll actually name these. I'm going to call these. You're going to, I can call this a one, or you might call that a, a G shape if you want to use that kind of terminology. And then this, I'm going to call it position two. And you might call it an E type of shape if you're, if you're going to name it from uh, the cage type system. So caged is spelled uh, C-A-G-E-D. So if I start on a G, then this would be like the E shape. And then this one, now we're gonna go to uh, position number three, which is gonna be a D type of shape if you're gonna use the cage system. And you can kind of see it with this little bit right there. And then we're gonna go to position, well, I was on a three, I'm on position four now, which looks like this. Let's pull this one up this time so we could see it a little bit better. So now it goes boom, 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 boom. If you're gonna play it like 
up and down or down the fret uh, board. Let's make that a different color on this shape. And I'm going to make this one uh, blue. And I'm going to say this is going to be a four. And so now we're at a D, we go back around to uh, the C. And you can see, you know, basically the position. And now we're past the 12th fret. And so we're back basically to position one. So you can see this is the same position in position one in essence. So let's copy that same color. And I can say, wait a sec, that's position one over here. And that's why you can see the C shape uh, right here. C shapes here, C shape here. So what we've been learning in position one is basically what I would call in an open position is what I would call position four, or you might label it as a C, uh, C position. So that's going to be one. And then uh, we're going to go to position two. And so I'm going to say this is going to be position two. And I'll put this like right there. I'm going to make that like purple. I think is the next color I have available to me. We're running low on colors. So uh, I'm going to call that position number five. And that's all the positions that we have. If that was a C, this is going to be an A if we look at our caged system. And you can see that here if you're holding this down and holding these down. It's not an A chord, but it's an A type of shape. We'll talk about that more later. And we can see, of course, that this one also repeats back here, because if that's if that's position four, then this has to be position five right here uh, as well. Let's bring this down a bit. And so I'll copy this over here. So you can see what's happening here. We're, we're gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna call that position one, even though it's in the middle of the guitar, because that's what often happens because that's the first position people often learn but you could name it the g shape position if that feels more right to you and then you've got position two position three position four which you can label with the caged positions if you want just remember don't get these confused which is very difficult to do when you're first trying to understand this as though these are the actual note uh, chords that you're playing no these are the shapes of the chord if they were played in open position, right? So the, the actual chord's gonna be different. But in any case, then it goes up to five. And then if I started at this middle position, when we start going backwards, we go around the loop. And so that means that we're gonna start from position one here. This was position one. And then position five is behind it because there's only five positions. And then we're gonna go back to uh, position four. So what we've, but we've basically been learning in my terminology would be position four, or you can think of it as the C position to, to anchor it to both the major and minor scale that's around it. And then now we're going to be, and then you can move it up from there if you so choose. Now, one other kind of weird thing, you could see that this whole column right here doesn't have anything, any, uh, doesn't have like the same overlap position. Uh, when we actually play the full major scale here, then we will be picking up another note. So I might just actually pull this one back to here. And you can see that this, once we add the major scale, will be a five fret one, right? And then this is a four fret position. And then basically you have another five fret position. So it's going to be kind of alternating between these positions being four and five frets. So hopefully I got that uh, correct. Let's color code this too. I'm going to make this home tab. Uh, make this uh, blue. Let's make this purple. And I know that might make it more difficult to see, but hopefully the color coding uh, will have advantages beyond the fact that it's difficult to see. And then let's make this uh, the green. And then we're going to make this the blue again. And then this is going to be the purple. So I won't keep on going up the neck from here. Let's stop it there. Let's make this uh, bold because we get to see it start over again. Now, I was going to try to see the overlap. Like you could try to map out what the overlap looks at looks like down here. So for example, if I'm looking at the, the difference, the overlap between the blue and the purple is right here, just to kind of try to emphasize that overlap. So if I put that over down here, this is the overlap between positions four and five right and if i look at if i look at like five is the purple and i'm looking at the purple as it overlaps uh to the red 
it's going to be the purple and the red overlap like right here, right? So there's the overlap. So you can think of this position as in between uh, the five and the one. And then I could say, okay, and then the one overlaps with the two right here in this uh, yellow space. So I'm going to say, okay, let's pull that down. And notice you get this weird thing where it's not really overlapping right here because you're alt we're alternating between a five fret and a four fret kind of position. So, so, and then I can say, okay, if it's going from here uh, to here, so now we're looking at the yellow as it goes to uh, the, the yellow overlapping with the green, gives me my overlap right here. And then if I'm overlapping the green to the blue, again, we have that skipping of, of no overlap here because we're going from the, the five fret position to the, to the four. So hopefully I did that well enough that, that, it, that makes some sense. I know it's kind of messy, but so that's why we're going to break these shapes down later one at a time. But before we do that, let's now think of it in terms of of the, 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 the major scale and the minor scale. So I'm still going to map out the minor. I'm going to select these one, two, three, five, six. Let's make those green. Home tab style or no uh, font and make it green. Not that green. I like the dark green here or I think that's easier to see. Maybe I don't know. And then I'm going to select this whole thing. And and this time uh, we'll map out, let's map out the whole thing in blue first, mapping out the major scale, and then I'll put the pentatonic on top of it so you can see how it fits within the major scale. So I'm first going to make everything blue. So I'm going to hit the drop down and make it blue. Everything needs to be blue this time. This time everything has to be blue this time, people. Why? Because I said so. That's why I'm controlling the color scheme and I don't want anyone messing that up. I'm in charge here. I've been in charge of the executive color scheme creator. I have complete control. E and then we're going to say this is going to be F and then this is going to be uh, G. I'm going to color format G. And then, okay. And then I'm going to color format A. A. And then, okay. Oh, wait a sec. That's a different color. Let's color format a and make it blue it has to be blue a oh a is blue and then b blue too okay so there it is the whole thing now let's keep it up this is the major scale let's actually i'm going to copy this whole conditional formatting and go to the home tab up here and copy that and paste it to the one below it as well. And so, so this is, this would be if I, if I had all the notes, uh, in place. So, and, and I can see the same, the same pattern. Let, let's, let's go ahead and put the, put the pentatonic on top of it. So let's go home tab, conditional formatting. Let's make the green ones, which will fit inside of it. C let's make that green. So now these are going to, we're going to switch the ones. We're putting a layer on top now, which is just five out of the seven notes. So that's going to be C to D, uh, D. And then we're going to an E is going to be green. And then we're going to uh, a G, skipping the F, going to the G is going to be green and then we're going to the a which is also going to be green okay so there we have it and so now you can see the pattern uh well it's going to be hard to see until we focus in on the pattern but you know but this is the same pattern 
except that we added the two extra notes, the F and the B. So let's go ahead and copy this down. I'm gonna, like if I copy each one of these kind of individually, I put that on like the four. You could see, you know, right there, boom. There's, there's our, our normal position if it was a pentatonic position but now we're adding these other cells and that's why we extended it back here to pick that one note up uh, in fret four. That's why we ha had it longer. Otherwise, if it was pentatonic, you wouldn't, you would, you could shorten that basically. And then uh, we can bring down, let's just bring this down this way. If I was to go, okay, let's bring this down like this dude. And so that's gonna be uh that one if we go back and let's let's just see if i can copy the rest of these i have this one i'm holding down control holding down control and control c and then i'm going to paste that right here boom so there there it is duh, duh, duh. i think everything is lined out let's go ahead and copy this stuff and put that down here as well. So there we have it. Uh, and so, so, so again, I know that's kind of messy. We'll, but we'll refer back to it later on. We'll focus in that kind of this middle position. Let's do the same thing again over here. I'm going to, I'm going to hold down Control and copy all this stuff again. And if we see it just with everything as blue. It looks like this, meaning this is just the major scale without the without the pentatonic mapped on top of it. Hopefully I have everything done well. I'm doing this kind of fast, but I think everything is mapped out the way it's supposed to be. And then let's do it one more time. Uh, so I'm going to select I'm going to select this major scale this time. And I'm going to format paint it home tab clipboard format paint it and put it right here again. And then I'm going to copy this whole thing again. The blue, the blue kind of blends in now, doesn't it? The blue blends in. So I can't even see it. What were you thinking with your color scheme? What were you thinking? No one can see the blue. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay whatever you know where you could see it okay so then now let's map on top of that like a a c a c chord just to just to see how the kind of the cage system works just so you can get an idea we'll talk about the cage system later but in this case it's useful for the for the naming of the positions so we'll do our, our, our normal naming routine. So I'm gonna select this whole thing and we're gonna go home tab style and let's make this equal to the C. We're gonna make that green, boom. And then we're gonna say this is gonna be equal to the E and that's gonna be red. And then I'm gonna say this is equal to the G and that's yellow. Okay, boom. So now if I mapped out our our positions here, what happened? Well, in this first one, uh, we have let's make let's make let's make this one blue because this is the blue C in position four is blue. Uh, like that. So we have there's the C. There's the C. What are you at the beach? There's the C. No, I'm talking about this. You can't even see that with all the other blue. Okay. It's a, oh, man, you do it over. You're messing everyone up. So there's our C position. Okay, and then let's make this a little smaller. Maybe I can see, so you can see that where the okay. 
And then if I moved to the next one, we have the A position, right? So then I'm going to say A position. Let's make this one red. It's going to be red. And no, it's not red. It's purple. We're not to the red yet. It's purple. And so there's my A position. So now I'm getting that C again. So we're layering on the meaning again. The, the meaning is layered because there's overlap between that and then uh, the A would go from here to here. So now we have the G. Let's make this one a little bit larger. And then, boom, see what I mean with the caged position? So this is still a C chord, but now this is like, this is like an A position that's like playing a C. What in the world? Let's just leave it at that. And then, and then we move up to the G position over here. So now it, that's going to be a, a, a red one. So the red is start, see that C right there? It's a C, but it's got like a G shape, man. Whoa, whoa, dude. Okay. I'm going to make this one larger. So then, so now see, this is why these three ones here, you can think of them as part of the G position or as part of the A position. Most people think of them as an A. G gets cheated. But they're kind of either one because it wouldn't necessarily be the A position unless you pick this one up because that's the one that makes it totally A-ish. Because like if you picked up these over here, then it would be like part of the C. And then if we went to the E, we can say that's going to be yellow uh, E position. So now we're going to pick up the C note again up top. This is going to be the E major shape, which we haven't really looked at because we've only looked at the minor shape when we're looking at the chord constructions from the key of C, but from the caged system, this would be our standard bar chord. Boom, 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 boom for a major bar chord, but it's still a C, even though it's like an E shape. And so you can lay that's why you can label this whole shape thing an, an E shape pentatonic or major scale position. Now be careful though when you when you try to label the entire sh the entire major shape as an E shape because I could move this E shape up to other positions, right? And it'll still fit even though I have a different shape. But if it was the pentatonic position, it would be unique. So it's still a little, uh, there's no perfect way to kind of do In any case, we'll talk more about that later. Let's finish it up here. We're going to the D. The D is here. And let's make this green. Uh, green. And then it's going to be in here. So we have to put layers upon layers. If you really want to get down to the truth, you have there's layers upon layers of lies that you have to, or half truths if you want to be generous to the liars. And then we're gonna put that there, okay? And then, so notice this whole D shape again is kind of in the middle between that and then the C. So if I connect this up to the C again, the C shape I can just copy. Just the blue ones. And I want to put that uh, over here. Oh, no, no. Grab it, grab it. Okay. So see how this whole D shape down here is really actually part of the C shape too. 
but people never call it that because it looks classic D like, but it's really not like fully D ish unless you pull that one in with the D shape because these notes are also in the C shape, but no one sees it that way. So you can just call it a D shape even if you don't pull in that note, but whatever, that's how it all blends together. So we'll start dive, like I say, we'll kind of dissect this later and we're just gonna focus in on this position first, right in the middle of the fretboard. And then we'll try to expand it out. My point here being that all this stuff kind of mushes together. And so what you wanna do is try to separate it at first and then let, then blend it together so that you have everything in its own little box, but then you realize that like, when it really comes down to it, there are no boxes.